We're in Southern California with the Diesel KLR because we found the only two people in the world that can help us get this running. So let's go get it running. This is the HDT M1030. Only 214 of these were designed and built for the US military. Now this is one of the rarest bikes you can buy today, which is cool until you need to fix it. Then you realize there's no parts, manuals are non-existent, and a YouTube search of how to fix my diesel KLR yields nothing. With over 30 years experience in working on motorcycles and diesel engines, I'm stumped. And this could quite possibly be the unfixable bike that's haunted my dreams for years. Where are we gonna start? Or should we take should we take some predictions of what we think's wrong? I already, I already tell you what's wrong with it. Meet Rick. Rick is one of those guys that has been there and done that and can tell stories for hours with an incredible resume, including NASA and a bunch of other places that he can't even talk about. As an engineer and accomplished machinist, he settled in at Hayes Diversified Technologies for a spell, working on the M1030 project. Rick knows these bikes inside and out, and he is the man when it comes to fixing diesel KLRs. So you already know. I already know. <laughs> we didn't even open this thing up yet, and this guy knows what's going on. And so here's what it is. After watching your guys' video, and when you put starting fluid in it and cranked it up and the bike took off running, you guys were scrambling to shut it off. Careful, don't let it run away. This area here is where they're supposed to be stamped with the numbers, the engine numbers. This one here is what they call an ink stamped motor and the ink has worn off. So we're gonna go see what the other ones should look like. Yeah, see that one there is stamped. Stamped with serial number and it's stamped HDT. Yeah, ours doesn't have it. So what they were doing is they were inking them. They were ink stamping, but here's what it is. You have a configuration in your engine that's different from all the configurations I was involved with. What are the chances? So you have the second oldest bike that I have seen so far. Really? Yes. And so there's bikes older than yours. The RCMS. RCMS. Are the first original bikes from the very first prototype bike. Okay. And so there's only three of those left. I don't know, I'm seeing a lot of these bikes now. And when you say a lot, I mean, we're not talking a lot, we're talking yeah. tens. I've 20, probably seen 30s. 20. Yeah. 20 of them so far. And so these are all products that are from these bikes, most of them. I keep all cylinders as cores mm -hmm. because I'm getting ready to make steel sleeves for these. And right now they're aluminum with nickel seal. You know, a gasoline burning engine, we're talking cylinder pressure of what, 90? Yeah. When you put a, a compression gauge on it. You put a compression gauge on these, your bike's probably at 300. When I'm done with them, change them the way they really should run, they run better at, they're 400. So a gas motor in general is gonna run six to nine to one compression. On a gas motor, you're gonna be less than 10. Yes. 10 to one yeah. compression. Yes. On a diesel motor, you're gonna be in that mid-teens, yeah. which means you're squeezing more air in the cylinder, creating high, higher cylinder pressure. Higher cylinder pressures equate out to heat, heat, which that's what ignites the fuel. Yep, and heat kills engines. It does. Not enough heat, the bike won't run. Too much heat, we burn them up. Yep. And that's more critical on a diesel. Oh yeah. Because diesels aren't obviously running off spark plugs, they're running off compression and heat. Right. That's what's firing a diesel. Look at the size of that injector. And then it's only it's only got one hole. You know, sometimes with, with injectors what they'll do is they'll they'll put a couple more holes in and change the spray pattern a little bit and that can change uh, efficiency and things like that. So this is just probably dumping a mad amount of fuel. Guys, we are gonna learn so much talking to these fellas. I can't wait, this is gonna be incredible. Here's a fuel pump. I just had this one rebuilt. This right here is the heartbeat of the engine. Okay, I, I'm a little familiar here. They have P pumps and yes. B, B pumps or something? Yes, you got the V44, and like it's in a Cummins. This is a plunger pump, which is a P pump. Yep, okay. And you got rotary valve pumps. Yep, you got yep. a multitude of different types of pumps. These plunger pumps are ideal. This here is completely designed just for this engine. So this, this part, this pump is yeah. not on anything else. It's not on anything else. The amount of money oh. put into R&D and the development of just this one piece has to be through the roof. Oh, it is. I mean, and, and, and with this all being military grade, it, it has to get tested 10 times more than any civilian. Parts. Well, inferior equipment means we have an inferior force. Yeah. And one thing America is good about, we test. 
we retest. We're satisfied with what we have, but come the next morning, we've slept on it. We have something else in our mind. Let's go back and retest. I took care of, at that point in time, any engineering designs that were coming down the pipeline. Most people don't think this is an eye-catching bike. When you look at it, this olive grab green, military. Big dorky bars. Oh my God. Couch for a seat. This thing on the front right. end, is oh. that a duck bill? <laughs> I'm in development stages right now of doing a, a civilian bike. It'll be the first one that will be released to the public. Diesel powered. Diesel powered, turbocharged. Turbocharged based off the KLR platform? Yep. It's going to be this particular bike. Huh. You're going to find the difference in the swing arm. Mm -hmm. You're going to find the difference in the lower frame here, the air box, the seat design. Oh, that big bulky fuel tank. We're going to get rid of that. We're going to bring the bike a little lower to the ground because not everybody is six foot two. Right. This is a tall bike. And if you guys know anything about KLRs, KLRs are, they're literally the tank of motorcycles. Mm -hmm. you, you can't kill a KLR. Like, I mean, they, they just run. They are, they are one of the most solid platforms and they're one of the most uh, longest lasting platforms. It has an outstanding record. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that's enough chit chat and trying to show my prowess of these KLRs to Rick. It's time to get to work. Yeah, so we're gonna pull seat tank, skid pan. Everything. Everything. Yes. This is Will, a diesel KLR enthusiast turned obsessionist. In the deepest, darkest corners of the internet, or as some like to call it, ADV rider, Will is known as the guy with all the information. Since 2016, Will has been curating a database all things M1030 related, and he's owned over a dozen of these bikes. And it was his willingness to help us out that led us here to Rick's shop. If this thing runs away... Yeah. I've seen it. I've had it happen. I, I mean, you're not getting this side panel off fast enough to stop air. I'm going to tell you what not to do right out of the gate. This little lever here, your compression release, do not grab that. There is a very close to valve to piston clearance. And if you turn this, you're going to do it in the panic of the moment. You're going to give it all it has. You're going to ruin a valve and hurt the piston. Here's what I recommend to do. Put it in a gear. I really recommend not first. Right. Go to second. Hold the rear brake and the front brake. Let the clutch out. Stall the engine. Will it stall it? Stall the engine. Okay. What happened to these tank screws? Right here. The screws that go into here, these are stranger danger screws. If you get a screw too long, you're going to poke a hole in the tank. You're going to leak diesel fuel. So with these screws, you make sure you use the right ones in there. Yeah. But I can see right now, someone has replaced these. These are not stock screws. And I see your fuel level's not that high. So I'm kind of on my toes because maybe they're down for a reason. All right, man, we're getting down to the brass tacks. Check it out. Look at the heartbeat of America. Freedom. I know they did the tank for range and Correct. things like that. Was some of that large tank design to help keep down heat signature? That I'm not aware of. It's all about range. So let's come back over here. Did you take the coolant tank off? Yes. Uh, yes, right here. Let's take the skid pan off of this thing. So here's something I'm gonna show you guys real quick. Something I noticed right away. You know what it sounded like when it turned over? Yeah, that's started. Huh? That's all starter. That's right. That's not turn your engine over. No. So what I'm expecting, you should just key way off. If these things get fired up backwards, so let's say you use starting fluid, lights very easily. You just breathe heat on it, it fires up. Cylinder pressure, we talked about, we were looking at the bike. As the compression gets made, it heats up. This thing is trying to fire at bottom dead center. With gasoline or starting fluid, it's a bad way to go with these. If you want to use starting fluid, crank the bike over and give it just a little shot. While the engine is turning, your chances of it running the right direction are good. If it fires up backwards, eight out of 10 times, you shear this off. And I'm suspecting that is what's happened here. Along I like with that your, theory. Along with your timing unit busted. Yep, that was busted it. though when we got it. I've never seen the timing unit this bad before. This is the worst one I've seen so far. I There's think, a reason we came to the best. Let me see if I can find a pin, I'll be right back. I'm gonna pull this, uh, you want skid plate off? Yes, there's a socket sitting right there, the socket wrench. I believe this is a number 12 wheel. You wanna start the front and I'll do the, the bottoms? Yeah. Do that. Divide and conquer. SK wrenches. That's how you know you're in an old timer shop. That's all good. Bro. So if I'm understanding this correctly, we pretty much did everything wrong 
that we could have done wrong the first time we did this, which is right about on par. Here's something I see, and I just found this while I was over there. A lot of people burn these up, and that's that pre-chamber. Oh, yeah. And you see a hole burned in that? That's what kills the bike right away. So when the bikes get hot and people really get on the throttle, this is what's happened. Okay, at this point in time, let's drain the oil out of this beast. It actually might be. Okay, yeah, the oil's out. That's good to know. And then the screen is in behind this black cover. Yeah, right over here. And that's where those chunks came from. When people see that, they think, oh my God, I've hurt the engine. And that's not the case. Most of these bikes are low mileage engines. And so you might be seeing debris left over from machining. And, and probably, especially for a guy like you with, with your experience in machining and different things, you can look at those chips and tell. I can tell very easily. So when you see those chips, Try to look at them. Was that a machining chip or was that a chip from something being wore out in the engine? And I haven't seen one of those engines yet of something being wore out. Okay. So let's take the shift lever off because it's in the way now. So after realizing that the starter was not actually turning over the engine, we had to pull off some things like the exhaust and the stator cover and the skid plate to get better access to the bike and see exactly what's going on here. Oh my word, look at that. That's left what? and right hand threads. Yeah. So it's almost like a turnbuckle in a way. It is. So we got left and right hand threads. So you'd screw this this collar, basically. You, you thread that down. So then as you tighten that, that's cinching everything down on itself like genius. I, I tell you, man, I'm, I'm a dork where like this stuff, I, I love that stuff. Okay. Amazing. Over here, we're taking off the primary cover. Oh my. Someone's been into here before. You can see how that's wore out, wore on there. Yeah. So we need to fix that. I miss it a washer. Oh, that's good when that's nice and hand tight. Well, I mean, it was tight, torqued to the right specification. I just happened to be extra strong. Oh. No. The bikes ran backwards. That's what happens here. Well, there's no keyway there. There's not even a key in it. But it did crank over. How could that be? It was tight. And how it cranked over to start? Well, first of all, it was on starting fluid, not diesel. And so when they busted that timing unit, they probably went around and started looking things over. What in the world's going wrong? Oh, Mighty. look, there's two gaskets on there. What? So your chances of an oil leak are... Just increased by 50%. Never, ever double gasket unless you're playing with base gaskets then you can get away with it a little bit we're just dumb enough to go all the way it boggles my brain how we got this thing to turn over the, the crankshaft bolts loose it's missing the keyway the things broke woodruff key da 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 woodruff key the task here today is to get this bike to fire up to run and it will run and so that's what we're going to shoot at right now yep. there's a couple of ways we can go around it so what i'm doing is i just kind of give this thing a bump and so it's like a teeter-totter. You can see where I raised it up. And then we're gonna put this back on. Our first hope that this is all we need to do because if we got to tear into the engine, it's a completely different story. Yeah. So let's get this lined up, put back on. Like standing in front of an air fryer, just blowing hot air. Let's get rid of this potential leaking problem. So seeing what you've seen so far, knowing what we know and everything, there was absolutely zero chance we were getting this bike to run. Yeah, it's looking that way to me more and more all the time. So when they said it was running, maybe down a hill. We got hundschwaggled, Rick. Yeah. We got hundschwaggled. So let's put this back together, shall we? Yep. So after fixing the woodruff key on the crankshaft so that the engine would spin over again with the starter, it was time to dig into this fuel system. And it didn't take long until I realized the real reason that Rick invited us out here. All right, there's a little screw right here. Yes. We gotta take that off. I'm gonna give you the honors. I Wait, mean, you, hold, hold on. You pointed to this one. Correct. There's the Allen wrench that does it. You got that from the snap-on man, I'm sure. No, that came from his uh, brother. Snap off. Snap off. <laughs> Now I know why you had me do this. This is the only reason he wanted us to fly out here was to take this one screw out. Thank God you guys fell for it. So here's what we're getting ready to do. This pump runs this way. That runs a plunger. And there's a barrel valve in here that pushes a plunger up. And we need to bring this up until the fuel stops dripping. Our drips real slow, like every three or four seconds drip. 
drip, you're there. Lock the pump right there. Bring the engine up to its fire position. Put in the timing unit, it's timed. Okay, I'll understand it once we do it. Once we get this where we want, then we're gonna reinduce this timing unit, put it on here, and then tighten it up. So Will, how did you, how did you become infatuated with these bikes? You just found one and fell in love with it? It was kind of odd, yeah. I was at an auction in Orange County from Orlando and literally just saw it and I said, I have to have it. And then here you are, just dove in head first. Yeah, that was 2016 when I got my first one. Okay. 2016, then total I've had to date is 12 of them. Some guys can be like, oh, who cares? That's not a lot. But when you had 12 of something that there was, say, less than 300 of. Correct, 214 were the one, is the exact number of them. So when you own 12 out of 214, that's a big deal. All right, let's get back to work. Let's bust this, this is the barrel valve. Let's break that open. And you're saying this is spring-loaded? That's spring-loaded. Is it gonna, you're gonna say, am I gonna send it out into lower throw orbit? No, it won't go that far. Neither did the moon landing. Well, let's start putting okay. some of this back together yep. for testing. You can see this lever down here is fuel rack. And so we're gonna time this. We're gonna open this wide open, and then we're gonna push this rack all the way open. That's gonna let the fuel flow 100% until we can get it to stop. Pretty scientific here. Yeah, it took me a while to figure this one out. That's got that throttle all the way open. Okay. So now we're gonna set the engine to top dead center compression? No, not yet. I knew that, I just wanted to make sure he was... Double check it on me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, put your finger over that hole. Got it. So as we use our redneck compression gauge, which was really nothing more than my finger over the glow plug hole in the cylinder, we realized we don't have any compression. And this is gonna be a huge problem. And I can tell that by the sound of Rick's voice. Maybe, yeah, there a little bit. Just a little bit? I mean, I, it's not blowing my finger off or anything. Well, that's a concerning fact. I could tell by the sound in your voice. Can I give it a couple whirls yep. here? Yep. I wasn't really that concerned though until Rick used his highly calibrated finger over the hole and confirmed this bike does not have any compression. So now we have to pull the valve cover off and start digging in to see what the issue is. Oh no, this is, this is what we did last time. We had to do the whole motor. Me and him, eight hours. Oh man, I hope it's not what I think it is. Because it happened to my bike, that's why. The one over there. Because if it is, we're gonna be here all night. Okay, so what happened was on that bike, remember he showed you the, the piston with the hole in it, right? Yes. And so that's what my biggest fear is. If there is a hole in that piston, then potentially we have to change the piston. Potentially is the word. The valves as well, because I had to do a whole new head. That's why you saw that one, that one's already done. As soon as Rick said that, I said, please don't let it be that. At this point in time, we're gonna do a compression test. When we went to time the pump, what we realized is we don't have compression. That's no bueno, that's not good. That means we have a problem somewhere in the top end. So we could have a couple things. We could have a bent valve, we could have bad rings, could have a hole in the piston. Yep. I think at this point in time, what we need to do is put the starter back in it. Let's see if we got compression, because we don't got no compression. We need to stop and deal with that issue. But we know we don't have compression. Well, we think we don't. Maybe it's leaking by our fingers or something. Well, you know, let's look at first elementary. Is this held open? Doesn't feel like it. Oh, oh. wait a minute. Oh, there, I just now pushed it closed. Let's try it again now. 10-4. So we could have been holding the exhaust valve open. Yep. Yes, yes. There we go, <laughs> all right. Maybe that's what the problem oh was. God. Okay. So, boy, I'm sure glad we took a look at that. Could you imagine? <laughs> All right, just to put this into perspective for you guys, we thought we were sunk. Like, and not sunk, I mean, we can get it fixed. We got, the, we got the brain power and the parts and everything. But if we didn't have compression, this was coming apart, right? You know, there's a lot of stuff here to do. So simply checking the bases and going through the checklist, that's something, you know, we overlooked. We had the compression release on. We're holding up the exhaust, we're holding open the exhaust valve. Are we holding up one or two? One. One exhaust valve, and that's why we didn't have compression. So by taking a step back, slowing down and thinking, we, you know, Rick realized what the problem was. Luckily, that was an easy fix, and Rick nailed it. 
But now that the cam cover's off, we realize that the cams are out of time. So that was one more thing leading up to this bike not running, and it's one more thing we gotta get fixed. And this is important when you're doing uh, cam timing like this. He had his finger in the tensioner hole, putting tension on, see, look, watch this. So I'm putting tension on the chain follower, and that is actually gonna move these a little bit. So if you're not putting tension here, you, they can look correct, but when you get your tension, when you get your tensioner on, they're gonna be out. So always, 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 before tightening things up, take the slack out of it by putting your finger in the hole or whatever you can get in the hole. So now it's correct. And you know it's gonna be correct when um, it goes back together. So now everything is amazing. It's gonna, we're gonna put it back together and it's gonna run. I enjoy how they put the tools when we're done on the bench and everything's lined up because I surely am horrible at that, but I appreciate it when it's done. All right, now we're on the fire position. I think we're at a point where we can start pressure timing. So something I like to do is this. I put this back on backwards. Then he's gonna get the fuel to come up and through that hose. And the reason he's putting on open backwards is I imagine it's gonna hang out the side of the, the engine so that he can put his pan in underneath and it's gonna drip into the pan versus making a mess all over. It, you're exactly right. One thing about diesel fuel, you can wash, you can shower, you're gonna go home once you've been in diesel fuel and still smell like diesel fuel. Kinda of like dairy farming. Now that we figured out the lack of compression issue and we got the cams back in time, it's time to divert our tension back to the fuel system and finish timing the fuel pump. After that, all we have to do is bleed the lines and hopefully this thing is gonna be ready to run. This isn't stuff you can find in a book. You're not getting a KLR diesel manual and learning how to how to do this, you know, fuel timing and, and all this stuff. It's just that information's not out there. You need to find the guys that know how to do it and learn from them. And that CRC over there? Yes, sir. Let's shoot a little, little lube in these holes. So he just put a little lubrication in that hole because what happens when you have, especially with steel and aluminum and the, the dissimilar metals, the aluminum will start galling and it'll start sticking actually to the threads and, and stuff on the steel like this. So you wanna be careful because once that starts happening, it's just bad. This is probably gonna be our most technically based video yet, I'm guessing. So this will be interesting to see how people follow. Nineteen in here. Hold that barrel valve so it doesn't turn, and ranch that line, and get it tight. If it sucks air, the bike will not idle. And then, are we gonna bleed through the top line? Yeah, we're gonna bleed through here just to get it started. So while Rick started bleeding the fuel lines, I took it upon myself to start cleaning out the oil passages. New oil, new oil filter, clean oil screen. This thing's gonna be ready to go. Okay, that's tight. Compression's out, thermostat's hooked up. This valve is, what is that tight? Nope. Here. You want it tight now? Yeah. Okay. Okay, tight, tight. We're probably getting pretty close to this thing firing up, correct? It is. They had a pair of these where we got this one. I wonder how the other one fared. We'll find out, they'll always reach out. Hey, you're the guy. I'm like, yeah, I'm the guy. <laughs> is this, are we getting ready to start? Well, we're getting ready to turn it over. Okay. This is it, guys. Well, we're not gonna start it yet. Okay, we're not gonna start it yet. I was just kidding, but stay tuned, we will. So here we go. You're gonna have a lot of compression come your way. It'll oh, start, yeah, it'll start to blow fuel out in a while. Well, then I'm going to move. And this is when I learned it takes three men and a monkey half a day to prime a diesel KLR. You ready? Ready. We got something shooting out. Where'd that come from? Not exactly what I'm trying to figure out. Where'd it awesome. shoot out from? I, that's what I'm trying to figure out. I don't know. <laughs> Watch it. Okay, we got fuel here. That's probably what it was. Shop up here from the hard line, just whoosh. Yeah, it's fuel. That's a good thing. So I've had people say, what's the best way to prime them? And here's what I'm doing right now. No load on the engine. 
because when you put the load on the engine, it really takes a lot out of the battery. So pull the glow plug, let it spin free. You'll see the fuel coming out of that port. Yeah, I see, see it. it. This is how you bleed the system. So people out in YouTube land, take note of this. Because if you ever change the fuel filter, the first thing I'm going to tell you, when you fire the bike up, bring it up to 3,000 RPM immediately. Let that fuel start to go through. Because if it catches air, you're done. And then you're going to go through this process. Most people freak out. It's like, oh, now what do I do? And you take it to, to a mechanic and they're going to say, oh, man, you know, you've got a bad injector. And this port over here is no good. You know, a thousand bucks, we can get this thing running again when it's a pretty simple fix. Yeah. Don't tell them the secret so I can buy them cheap. Oh, I see what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, if it runs out of fuel, she's a dead player. Give Will a call. <laughs> he buys junk bikes. Yep. And uh, from there, you know, we take them apart, dissect them. So let's see if I can't blow some fuel out that port now. Okay. There it comes. Yeah. All right, she's primed. I think that, I feel that's the best way of priming them. All right, now is it the moment of truth? Drum roll, please. All right, now we have the system primed. We have it in time. We have things put back together. I don't know, it's been a long day. This bike's gonna run though. Is there a special starting sequence? Like blow the horn three times? It's actually four. Hit, okay, horn four. So Twice. look at the red light blinking. Yep. That's what we kind of need. I'm gonna hold the throttle wide open. Got some puffing out of the exhaust. So at this point in time, hand me a Phillips. Take the screw off. Sounds like the battery doesn't have enough juice. Yeah, it sounds like we're asking all of it. Oh, hoy. that's nice and Whoa. clean. Mm. Yeah, I'm gonna say that filter needs to be cleaned. I've learned more today about diesel motorcycles and this motorcycle in particular than I think I could have learned in months of research on my own. Okay, get out of the line of fire. So you're gonna hold wide open. Yeah. And then while it cranks. What's the battery charger say? 75%. Is there a red light or a green light? Yellow light or Yellow green? Yellow light, so it says power on. Here we go. Hey, hey. <laughs> hold the throttle open. No, I'm telling you, you gotta hold the throttle open. Do not let it idle. Let go of it. Rick, we got a high five, that's what we do. Ha ha! So it still has air, it's trying to get the air out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now you're gonna shift that pump just yep. a little bit on them slotted holes. We're gonna put a tweak to the twist. And it's gonna clear up. And we'll see that idle clear up and get steady. You hear it change? Yeah. Tighten all three up. Tight. <laughs> Your fuel lines are leaking. Yeah, these little guys are popping up. It's common, these things are common. So, oh yeah, this guy is common. Usually we put a little clamp or something zip yeah, tie on yeah. it. Someone's went in there screwed with it and didn't put no clamps on. All oh. right, so we put some clamps on. This is the wrong fuel line on here. Someone put a vinyl on here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not the best no, thing in the right. world. Right now it's running pretty clean. It's not smoking much. So let's fire it up one more time. Give you the honors. Okay, so I just heard it click. Yeah, so is the light on? That, nope. All right, so still start up to it 10. over. Throttle. All right, you give it a blessing right this minute. Not smoking very much. It's running pretty clean. So right now, I think it's running pretty decent. So if you got a blessing, let's take it one step farther. Shut it off. Let's install the tank, the seat, the side covers, the chain guard, and let's get you on the bike and take a ride. <laughs> Look at the smile, that's great. That was, you guys put the tank on, I'm putting this on. Yep. I can't believe the time has finally come. I've been waiting all day to hear Rick say those words. Now we're gonna hurry up and button this thing together and get it off the lift. Lights 
out. Then it's blinking, that's what we want. Starter. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as we did making it for you. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out one of these two videos here. I know you're gonna love it.